some would argue you should be trying to buy the club that you grew up supporting, as opposed to Chelsea. Yes, I mean, I, I can understand that, but Manchester United's not for sale. Mm. Au contraire. Who would you support if you succeed in buying Chelsea? United or the club you own? That's a very difficult question. I mean, I think if I own Chelsea, I would have to support Chelsea. But, I mean, you can never get... I mean, it's in your DNA, you know. Your original club is, is, always, is always... It's quite deep-rooted, so... Um, that would be a tough one. Jim Ratcliffe there, of course, speaking when he was on the verge... Well, I say on the verge. He was never really on the verge of buying Chelsea, but when he was submitting his offer for Chelsea. But now... We've had the we've got the news that I suppose as Manchester United fans, certainly me personally, I've been waiting a long, long time for. The door is firmly open for the Glazers selling Manchester United. We're still at initial stages. We're not getting overexcited. But in this video, I want to explain exactly who Jim Ratcliffe is. Who was he? Where was he born? How did he make his billions? Has he been involved in sports elsewhere? What do we need to know about him? How much is he worth? I'm going to cover all of that in this video for you. So make sure you please hit that subscribe button. Become part of the United People's TV community because we're heading... I don't know, it's, something's happening at the moment. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell as well. But the energy behind getting the Glazers out has helped get us towards this stage. And I, I've done my videos on it yesterday and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm so excited. I really am so excited. The idea of somebody like Jim Ratcliffe buying Manchester United, it's dreamy. But who is Jim Ratcliffe? Now, Jim Ratcliffe is a Manchester lad. Look at him there on the back cobbled streets of Manchester. He was born in Failsworth. Here's a little map. That's Old Trafford in the bottom left. That's Failsworth in the top right. Less than eight miles from Old Trafford, Failsworth is. He is a, a Manchester lad who, of course, has become a billionaire. Now, he has made his billions through the business Ineos, which he founded in 1998. It's like a chemical, global chemical company. Um, that is where he has made his money. And he has made plenty of it. If we look at a 2021 uh, Sunday Times rich list, they've got his personal worth down there as 6.3 billion. Now, I want to reiterate there, that's personal worth. That's not really taking into account, um, or maybe it is, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but the figures vary between 6 and 12 to 13 billion, depending on whether you include all the assets that he's got elsewhere. But in terms of net personal worth, Jim Ratcliffe has got enough money to buy Manchester United outright on his own. And not just for that reason alone, but that is a significant reason why he's such a good prospective owner. Of course, when you add into the fact that he is a Manchester-born lad who lived quite literally eight miles away from Old Trafford throughout his youth. He is a Manchester United fan. You heard that there in the start with his interview with Dan Roan on the BBC. He was saying Manchester United is not for sale. That's now completely changed. And he has registered his interest. He's made it abundantly clear he wants to buy Manchester United. And this is, the, this is the moment that we've been waiting for as fans for a long, long time. But I, this, I believe, is the, probably the, going to be the most interesting part of this video for you. In terms of who Jim Ratcliffe is. Because I'll tell you what, this dude loves sports. <laughs> he might love making billions. But this dude absolutely loves sports. Because he has been involved in plenty of different ventures. Let me sort of run through a chronological explanation of what he's done. Go back to 2017 when he bought Swiss club Lausanne. And that was his first venture into sport. Not the only venture that he's had, though. He's had quite a few in different, I suppose, fields, different sports. Uh, this was Ineos's first uh, venture into sport. Well, I think it was the, what's the name of the sailing team? Can't remember, Davis Cup? I think it's called Davis Cup. Anyway, Ineos bought the team there. And that was his first venture with Ineos into sports and not the only venture with sports and with Ineos because of course Ineos bought Team Sky and Team Sky of course they won the Tour de France I think they won it with um Bradley Wiggins when it was Team Sky and uh, it's Chris is that Chris Froome I think that's Chris Froome I'm just guessing here I should have I should probably looked at this photo before I pulled it up but Ineos has been involved in sailing Ineos has been involved in cycling and back in 2017 in his first venture into football he bought Swiss club Lausanne but that's far from the end of it with Jim Ratcliffe and with sports. Because, of course, 
Ineos became one of the principal sponsors of Mercedes Formula One back in 2021. Here you can see him pictured with, I believe, that is that obviously yeah, it's Verstappen on the left. You can, actually, you can see the bloody name tags on him. <laughs> Verstappen on the left, next to Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas on the right hand side. Honestly, this dude, he loves sports, but all of that's kind of, I say not irrelevant, but that's all good context. But I suppose the one that we all want to know a bit more about is Nice. Now, in 2019, Jim Ratcliffe bought Nice for 100 million euros. And just even this picture alone, the owner, imagine the owner of Manchester United walking around the state, the ground, waving to the crowd and the crowd waving back. That's a, that's a completely foreign concept with the Glazers in charge. If, I, mean, I swear to God, if, if anybody in Old Trafford knew that Avram Glazer was there the other day, it would have been a very, very different atmosphere inside that ground. I don't think anybody particularly knew. Uh, but yeah, he bought Nice in 2019. Now, what I might do is do a bit more of an in-depth video. Dive into his ownership of Nice. Try and find some reports. Try and find what the feelings and how the ownership has gone since 2019. I think it'll be interesting to do a bit of a deeper dive into it. But this is more of a surface level. This is what you need to know about Jim Ratcliffe at this point. But there's still more, of course. Because... We know, whoops, that Jim Ratcliffe tried to buy Chelsea. He went in with, I'll be honest, it seemed like a weird thing to do. He went in with a bid for Chelsea worth, I believe it was 4.25 billion. That involved an overall fee of 2.25 billion for Chelsea and a pledge to spend, I believe, around about 2 billion on stadium developments of uh, Stamford Bridge and new players. Sort of like your guarantees of what you're going to invest inside the club. But he did that at such a late point. It didn't really make any sense, if I'm being honest, because due diligence with these sorts of mega, mega deals takes a long time. So the idea that you can just turn up late with a big check and go, well, eh, right, there you go, you're going to take it. Well, it didn't work. Todd Bowley obviously bought Chelsea. And for the life of me, I just sat there and went, it kind of doesn't really make any sense that he would do that. And some industry insiders do believe that it was his way of sort of flexing and showing. Look, if Manchester United was for sale then I will be interested. And he's made that abundantly clear now. The fact that we've got this there, we know full well, this isn't just speculation. I did a video on Jim Ratcliffe a few months ago, speculating, hoping, saying, look, Jim, if you're willing and you're ready to buy Chelsea here for 4.25 billion, then come back to Manchester. Come back to the place that you were born. Come back to the place where you lived less than 10 miles away from as a kid, the team you supported as a young lad. Screw Chelsea. Let's forget about that. Come back to Manchester and buy United. And that's the point where we're at now, where Jim Ratcliffe has come out. He said, look, I want to buy Manchester United. You, you remember that video I showed you at the very start? Uh, that video where it's, uh, sorry, the video where he says, look, Manchester United is not for sale. So, you know, what am I going to do? Manchester United is for sale. That's what we've now found out. It kind of explains the Glazers' trepidation in this market, why they've been tighter on the purse strings. And the, I mean, they've always, they're always tight on the purse strings. Actually, they spent a lot. We've wasted a lot. Let's, let's not get into that conversation now. But Jim Ratcliffe, don't know whether it was posturing with the Chelsea deal. Don't know whether this was just a calling sign, like Batman putting his light in the sky. But we've got Jim Ratcliffe now who wants to buy Manchester United. And as I've explained and showed in this video, from, uh, from the point when he tried to, well, not really tried, when he bought Swiss Football Club Lausanne back in 2017, to him being involved in sailing, I think the American, is it the American, American Davis Cup? American Cup? America's Cup? I don't know what it's called. Anyway, he was involved in sailing. That was Ineos' first venture into sport. Then they bought Team Sky. He's also been involved in Formula One with Ineos becoming... This dude loves sport. And then he bought Nice in 2019. He's got his fingers everywhere in sport. He loves it. And we love him. And we love the fact that, that Todd Bowley... Thank you very much, Todd, for going through with that offer. You are a good dude. But he wants to buy Manchester United. We want him to buy Manchester United. And I hope this video has sort of given you a little bit more insight into where his money's come from. As I said, that's probably one of the main things that you want from this video. His net worth is over $6 billion on his own. And I think that's net personal worth. So when you take into account probably other assets, that could certainly increase. He's got enough money to buy Manchester United on his own. That's a big thing. No consortiums required when it comes to Jim Ratcliffe. It's him and him alone. 
And if he can buy Manchester United like he wants to, he wants to own all of it as well. He's only interested, it says right there, he's only interested with the minority stake with a long-term view to taking full control. This is what we've been waiting for, man. This is what we've all wanted for a long, long time. Keep fighting the fight. Go to the protests on Monday. Make noise. Do whatever you can. And Jim Ratcliffe, baby. Swear to God, if you buy Manchester United. Mm -mm. That, that party in Manchester and that parade is going to be a hell of a party. But look, I hope this video has helped you understand a bit more about Jim Ratcliffe, what he's done in sports, what he's done in business, how he's earned his money. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Become part of the community as well and subscribe. Bye. Something's happening. And we've been waiting 17 years for it.